This is Shane Roberts at Impact Soundworks, proud to present the updated complete tutorial on our groundbreaking look ahead system. Tokyo Scoring Strings 2.0 has been released, and with it, a brand new engine rewritten from scratch, which includes some improved features, including access to more legato types and optimized voice playback. The look ahead system is our proprietary feature which accesses future MIDI data in order to analyze the composition. In simpler terms, it looks ahead in the composition to see what you've written before playing back, as opposed to most virtual instruments, which play MIDI immediately in real time. This allows the engine to adjust the performance of the samples so that they play accurately to what you write. The system supports a highly intelligent polyphonic legato, sound quality improvements by playing samples with full attacks, an optional simplified articulation system that drastically reduces reliance on key switches, and automatic legato speed analysis. Now that you know what Look Ahead is, here is an example composition produced using the five instrument sections exclusively engaging the Look Ahead system. The MIDI data for this piece is completely quantized and contains only one key switch for the tremolos you hear during the start. Minor instrumental additions from other libraries include percussion, woodwinds, and choir. Now let's dive in and learn how to use the Look Ahead system. Look Ahead introduces either a 1 second or 300 millisecond latency, depending on if you have short mode engaged. The latency is compensated by the included Delay Compensator plugin, or can be compensated using negative track offset or manual delay reporting in your DAW. Any composer who is familiar with Note Performer, a latency based playback enhancement for notation software, will feel right at home with the playback delay. This means that you cannot record live when look ahead mode is engaged, and you'd want to record in a mode like zero latency instead and clean up your MIDI for the system to analyze afterwards. Additionally, look ahead only operates while your DAW session is currently playing. Naturally, this means if you're only playing at your keyboard, you won't really notice a difference. While paused, the engine effectively behaves in standard mode like normal without the latency. Setting up your workflow for Look Ahead is incredibly easy and takes only two steps once you have all your patches loaded. Step one is to click the large Look Ahead Engine Mode button on the bottom right of the screen to switch away from standard mode in each patch you have loaded in the session. 
You'll also want to decide if your patches are going to play using the full 1 second latency or the 300 millisecond latency of short mode. If you're vision impaired, you can also use the engine mode host parameter automation, which is also available in NKS. In this case, the maximum value of the parameter is the look ahead engine mode selection. Once look ahead engine mode is engaged, you'll notice while your session is playing in the DAW, the Tokyo scoring instruments will sound completely off by one second, which brings us to step two. Step two is to activate your DAW's latency compensation feature to get all your tracks back in synchronization. We recommend using the included delay compensator plugin by adding it as an effect on each mixer track that we have a Tokyo scoring strings patch on. Once you focus the plugin, there is a single knob which toggles the value of the delay compensation from 1 millisecond to 1000 milliseconds, as well as four available presets that load specific delay times for Impact Soundworks libraries. For vision impaired users, the delay compensator is compatible with your screen reader software and compatible DAW. The idea is to inform the DAW that a given track is going to be late by the specified amount of time. The DAW will then use Plugin Delay Compensation, or PDC, to make all the other tracks in the session wait in order for everyone to play in time again. Depending on your DAW, the visual playback cursor may or may not be correctly in sync. For example, Studio One Pro, as shown here, does correctly sync the playback cursor to where it should be. A DAW like FL Studio will unfortunately display the cursor ahead of time, regardless of the compensation. If, for some reason, the delay compensation plugin isn't working for you, check your DAW's manual or tutorials on how to either apply negative track offset or report latency on mixer channels. Ensure that you are using the correct value of either 1000 milliseconds or 300 milliseconds, depending on which look ahead mode you are using. Legato in look ahead mode is only processed for notes where the starts and ends are at the same time in order to process full polyphonic legato. This means that note overlaps, for example a 16th or 8th note long, will actually not be considered legato. Overlaps are how the system assumes that a new voice is entering the texture. In the future, we are planning to restore the ability for look ahead to process monophonic legato with overlaps, so be on the lookout for this feature in patch 2.1. By default, the articulation mapping is the same as standard mode but the real strength of Look Ahead lies in the Easy Arctic system, which we'll show you in the next section. This optional mode of Look Ahead is designed to expand the possibilities of what you can do in a single MIDI track, while giving you an easy and efficient method of switching between the Arco Sustain and the various shorts. The Easy Arctic system requires the full one second latency of Look Ahead and is disabled in short mode. Currently, in version 2.0 of the Look Ahead system, you are still required to use key switches if you want to access tremolos, trills, or harmonics. The idea behind EasyArtic is that note velocity tells the system whether you want connected or separated notes. We have two regions for this, the legato region and the static region. Think of it as splitting the velocity range into two separate velocity ranges. The legato region is velocity 1 to 63 while the static region is velocity 64 to 127. In the static region, articulation selection is done by analyzing the note duration. For Tokyo scoring strings complete, notes under 10 milliseconds are pizzicato. Above pizzicato, notes under 200 milliseconds are spiccato secco. From there, notes under 300 milliseconds are spiccato. Notes under 400 are staccatissimo. Under 500 are staccato. Under 700 milliseconds are decrescendo shorts, or sforzando shorts if max velocity. Notes under 900 milliseconds are decrescendo longs, or again sforzando longs if max velocity. For any note durations beyond, the system will use the long articulation that you currently have key switched. By default this is Arco, but be aware this Arco will not be able to receive legato transitions. For Tokyo Scoring Strings Essentials, it is a bit simpler. Notes under 10 milliseconds are pizzicato. Above pizzicato, notes under 300 milliseconds are spiccato. Notes under 400 are staccatissimo. Under 500 are staccato. Beyond 500 milliseconds, the system again defers to your key switched long articulation. As an important note, contact doesn't support notes overlapping themselves, even if they're different articulations. 
so be sure when adjusting durations that you don't allow this to happen, as contact will give incorrect instructions to the Tokyo engine, and your results might be unexpected. For writing connected phrases, we'll edit velocities to be in the legato region, which is now split into four sections. Lyrical legato triggers between velocities 1 to 15, slurred legato triggers between velocities 16 to 31, bowed legato triggers between velocities 32 to 47, marcato legato triggers between velocities 48 to 63. In Tokyo scoring strings complete, if you want the portamento versions of bowed and slurred legato, you can automate the sustain pedal, or CC number 64, to engage it at the time that you want portamento instead of legato. In this case, slurred portamento is between velocities 1 and 31, and bowed legato is between velocities 32 and 63. In the 2.0 engine, we now support tremolos and trills in the legato region, if you have them key switched. In a future update, we are planning to allow users to fully remap the easy Arctic triggering conditions to their heart's content using the TACT GUI. Stay tuned for developments on this front. By making use of this special workflow, it's very easy to write multi-articulation polyphonic parts within the same MIDI channel. Let's look at an example. Notice how you can write uninterrupted chords with various short articulations interspersed. Try this with our full ensemble patch and you can write an entire string orchestra in just one MIDI channel, with as much polyphonic legato and as many short articulations as you want. An automatic feature in the 2.0 engine allows samples to play fully uncut when using Look Ahead. In standard mode, the attacks of samples are actually cut using the sample offset parameter so that the note will play in real time in a satisfying way. This is great for playability, but you lose some of the realistic noise that happens prior to the note as a result of the bow. Normally, it's unreasonable to leave this noise in because the samples would feel too delayed when playing at the keyboard. Look Ahead is designed to synchronize future MIDI, so it can actually play the samples early enough to retain all of that pre-transient noise while having the actual note play where you want it. Now let's talk about the legato speed function. Normally, in a library that offers different legato speeds, you would use velocity to control the desired speed setting, or in our case, you could also automate the legato speed knob manually. However, with this option engaged, Look Ahead will simply pick the speed that fits for the passage, making sure it always has the time it needs to complete note transitions. So let's see it in action. I'll write a melody starting with 16th notes and we'll see what happens. You can see the profile selection react dynamically during the passage. Additionally, the legato speed analysis feature will also engage the legato runs when playing notes faster than 100 milliseconds. Lastly, if you're a composer who prefers to record parts, the main draw of Look Ahead, which is automatic synchronization, is already taken care of by your own performance. But if you'd like to input notes on your keyboard while utilizing Look Ahead, you still have some options available. The first is to use your DAW's Step Record feature to input notes. Here you can see me turning it on and then inputting a scale run on my own MIDI keyboard. Another option is to record live in zero latency mode. This will let you hear the notes instantly as you play them, but with a reduced sound quality. You can then edit your MIDI to get the performance that you want. For legatos, you want to snap together the note starts and ends. Some DAWs, like Studio One, have simple macros that allow you to do this with the press of a button or key binding. A misconception since the initial release of Tokyo Scoring Strings 1.0 is that our look-ahead system requires music that is rhythmically quantized. This is not actually a requirement of the look-ahead system at all. It merely is a requirement for legatos that the starts and ends occur at the same time, with no overlap. If you want your performance to be off the grid, for example, for the sake of humanization or ametric music, you could also use your slice tool in order to create a precise junction point and clean up the ends afterwards. Or, you can quantize your performance to the grid and then slide the junction points around manually, but this depends on what features are available in your DAW. 
It's really important to talk about parameter automation, since DAWs all implement it differently with respect to PDC. The look-ahead system by default automatically delays parameter automation on all user interface controls, including dynamics, vibrato, and expression. However, some DAWs already delay the parameter automation internally, and if that's the case for you, the automation will actually end up overcompensated and desynchronized against your performance. If you find this happening, you can turn off the UI parameter sync option in the advanced tab. We apologize for the disparity, as this incompatibility exists at the DAW level, which we cannot control for in our software. It is worth investigating if your DAW includes an option to turn its own synchronization for automation off, and if not, consider requesting the feature to the DAW's development team. A new improvement in the 2.0 engine's look-ahead system optimizes the ARCO and legato voice count of your instrument when using the UI parameter sync. Unfortunately, if you are using a DAW where the UI parameter sync produces incorrect automation, this improvement is not available to you. If you are using UI parameter sync, any ARCO and legato notes which are shorter than the look ahead's latency window, either 1000 milliseconds or 300 milliseconds, depending on your selected mode, will analyze the dynamic and vibrato automation in order to ascertain what samples are actually required to produce the playback. This means that in many cases, even if standard ARCO notes play 15 distinct voices to allow crossfading between all dynamic and vibrato variations, the look-ahead notes may play a vastly reduced number of voices depending on how static the automation is. The strength of this feature is best demonstrated in the runs. Because the notes are so short, there is little opportunity for dynamic and vibrato automation yielding maximum certainty that the equivalent sound can be produced with a vast reduction in the contact voice count. Here is a demonstration. And because runs notes are so short, they are always guaranteed this optimization, even in look ahead short mode. As an additional note, when using look ahead, there are two quirks we have to deal with. Number one is that the visual positions of controls that you're automating in look ahead will not line up with the actual performance that you hear. In other words, the parameters will process correctly and sound correct, but they will visually appear offset. This is actually not possible for us to fix. In Contact 7, we can't actually delay the visual animation of knobs and buttons. Additionally, if you are using the UI parameter sync, you won't be able to adjust parameters in real time while playing back the session, as the session playback is what triggers the parameter sync. Any adjustments you make will be interpreted as automations from the DAW, and you will experience your knob tweaks to be visually overwritten by past automation and have delayed effect. We are looking to tackle problems like this to make the experience even more seamless in the future updates, depending on advancements in the contact platform, so be on the lookout. That concludes a full overview of all the information required to make full use of our look-ahead system. We recommend bookmarking this video and also our product manual. Rewatch the video periodically to internalize the small details and especially the quirks. We are incredibly proud of this feature and incredibly thankful for the opportunity to invest in its continued research and development. We are also thankful to the rest of our sample editing and quality assurance team, along with our software developers for their work and continuing work in ensuring that the samples play reliably, consistently, and with a beautiful sound. And of course, to our Japanese team for delivering us such incredible performance recordings. Once again, this is Shane at Impact Soundworks. Now go play with your new strings and show us what you're made of.